Guys, welcome back. This video, we're going to be discussing the most commonly asked question, which is which EV charger should I buy? We're going to go through the four factors to consider. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you three chargers that we recommend. So factor number one is what power rating do you need? Now, when we're looking at power ratings, basically what we're talking about is the speed of your charger. So how fast it will charge your car. Now, as you can imagine, when we get calls in, the first question we get or the first query is, what's the fastest charger that I can have? Now, chargers start from 3.6 kilowatts and they can go up to 350 kilowatts. Now, typically in the UK home, you only have a single phase incoming supply and that limits how much kilowatts you can have on your charger. So usually the maximum you can have is seven kilowatts and that is more than adequate. So if I give you a quick example, something like the BMW iX, that has around 71 kilowatt hour battery. So if we were to charge that from zero to full, we're on a seven kilowatt charger, you're talking roughly 11 hours. And again, like I always say, with your car char charging, yeah, treat it a bit like your mobile. So you're not constantly putting your phone on charge. You're not constantly topping it up all the time. Normally you charge it up and then you might top it up overnight. So with a seven kilowatt charger, an hour of charge will roughly give you 22 miles. And the majority of people don't drive more than 20 or 30 miles a day anyway. So your car won't need to be consistently on charge. Seven kilowatts is adequate for most people. There's also a caveat with that because some cars can't accept that. So some, every car has a charging rate it can accept. So there are some smaller cars and they cannot accept seven kilowatts. Their charging rate might be 3.6. So even though you've got a seven kilowatt charger, it doesn't matter. The car will only charge at 3.6. So like I said, seven kilowatt is the one we recommend. It's the highest you can generally get in a domestic home and it's more than adequate to do the job. So factor number two to consider are the features. What features would you like out of your EV charger? Now, again, I'm gonna relate this back to a mobile phone. When, if someone said to you they didn't know what a mobile was, what phone should I get? As you know, it'll have the basics. Most phones got basics now. They've got the internet, they've got the camera, texting, voice calls. So it's a bit similar with EV chargers. So the great thing about them now, they've got apps, so you can download the apps, you can see how much your car is charged, what's left, it, it gives you all, all the little details that you like. You can have solar integration as well, and that's a great, great feature. So in the future, if you decide to get solar or you've already got solar, what it can do is divert the energy from the solar straight into your car. So free energy, free energy from the sun, basically, which is a great, great feature. Another great feature is you can do something called scheduled charging. So what happens is most people, you'll get home five, four, whatever time it may be. And around that time, your energy costs the most. So it's the peak time. But that's also the most likely time you're likely to plug the car in. So what you can do is actually schedule a time for it to charge. So you come home, plug your car in, and you set it up in the app. Now, there are a few companies out there 
that charge a lot lot less if you charge from midnight onwards so what you can actually do is set your charger so start charging at midnight and this way you won't pay any peak rates for the electric so I think that's a very very important feature to have so like I said most of them are quite similar and it just comes down to a preference like like the mobiles but the free chargers I'll show you at the end I'll go through each feature that it has that I think stands out factor number three tethered or non tethered now this purely comes down to your preference whatever you prefer so a tethered charger is simply one end of your charging cable is hardwired into your EV charger. So think of a petrol pump. And when you go to the petrol pump, one side of it goes into the pump, which is your EV charger. And then you, you put it into your petrol cap and that fills up your car. So that is a tethered charger. And what you do, once you're finished with it, you wrap it around the charger normally, or there'll be a bracket, and then you can be on your way. A non-tethered is more like your mobile phone. So when you want to charge your mobile phone, you first have to find a socket outlet and plug into that, and then the other end you have to plug into your mobile. So when you get out your car, or get your cable out and you plug one end into your EV charger and the other end into your car. Now they both have their advantages and disadvantages and I will do another video and go into full detail on this. But something like a tethered, you haven't got to worry about losing your cable. You know, if it's cold, it's raining, you can quickly just unwind it and it's one step less than a non-tethered. On the other hand, the non-tethered, I think, look a lot neater and it's very easy to upgrade the cable. So that's just, pure, it's a pure preference on whether you want tethered or non-tethered. There is a price difference as well. The tethered does normally cost a little bit more. We'll discuss this further in the next video. Right guys, factor number four is aesthetics. How do you want your charger to look? So there are some ugly chargers out there and there's some beautiful ones as well. Again, a bit like a mobile, this just comes down to your preference. And what this does is actually leads us on to the next subject, which is quite nice, which is the free chargers that we recommend, that we like, and that we like to install. Now, I must stress, we're not sponsored by any of these chargers. This is just off our own research that we're talking about these, shall I say. So the first charger is called Easy. Now, we absolutely love this charger. It's a great looking charger and you can get it in a variety of colors. It's a seven kilowatt charger. It can come in tethered or non-tethered, whichever you prefer. Uh, it doesn't have solar, but, but it has a feature that makes up for not having solar. So normally when you install a charger for each one, you need a separate circuit and you can't we it's not it's very hard to get that in a uk property to have that availability but with this one you can have up to three chargers on one circuit so you can have three separate chargers at home and it's very smart the way it works if you're a commercial client you can have up to 101 of these chargers so we absolutely love these chargers second charger is called Zappi so this is designed by my energy and this is a great great charger it's not the best looking at the free but it's the one with the most features so this is a seven kilowatt charger 
You can have it in a tethered or non-tethered. It has an application for your mobile as well. It also has solar and it has three modes of charging. So it can use your solar and your grid and you've got two other options, fast charge as well. It's a great, great unit for features. Last but not least, this charger is Simpson and Partners. So this is what you would call the Rolls Royce of EV chargers. Again, it comes in seven kilowatt, tethered or non-tethered, solar integration, it has a mobile app as well. This is constructed in the UK of high quality materials, wood and metal. They're made to last. Also, you can get this in over a hundred different colors. So this can be custom made and these look beautiful when they're on the wall. They look absolutely gorgeous. They also have something called an S1 processing chip. They're the only ones to have this and it's patented for them. And it's a safety feature. Guys, that's all there is to it. It's as simple as that. Have a look over those four factors and just see what you prefer. Right, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.